The Rigor Relevance Framework is a tool that can help you think about how you use technology in the classroom. It has two continua, the thinking continuum, which is rigor, and the action continuum, which is relevance. The thinking continuum is based on Bloom's taxonomy. It goes from the acquisition to the assimilation of knowledge. The action continuum, or application model, moves from the acquisition to the application of knowledge. When a task is on the high end of the thinking and the action continua, it is in the adaptation quadrant. This is where students can adapt their knowledge to new, creative, and complex tasks. Ideally, we want our students working in this adaptation quadrant as often as possible, and technology can be a helpful tool for this type of task. To determine whether technology is being used in the best way possible, consider the following. Are students using technology to show they remember or understand the material? That would be in the acquisition quadrant. This might look like a quizzes review of types of fungi. Are students using technology to solve problems in realistic and varied predicaments? That would be in the application quadrant. This might look like a computer game where students play as foragers who encounter and identify different types of fungi. Are students using technology to help them think deeply and complexly about knowledge they acquire? That would be in the assimilation quadrant. This might look like students researching fungi online, maybe by watching YouTube videos or reading online articles to understand the intricate differences between types of fungi and how they function. And finally, are students using technology to meaningfully analyze, evaluate, or create with the deep knowledge they have obtained? That would be in the adaptation quadrant. This might look like students creating an app that allows users to scan fungi with the phone camera to identify its type. Technology has a unique power allowing students to create in ways that would not be possible otherwise, so we should use it for adaptation quadrant tasks as often as possible. Let's think about how this might look in lesson planning. A high school science teacher is teaching a unit on energy, and the next topic is solar energy. He thinks about the rigor relevance framework and how he can push his students as high up the thinking and action continua as possible. He might implement a project where students solve a problem by creating something for the real world, such as a solar-powered flashing speed limit sign for a street by the school. To solve this problem, students must have a deep knowledge of the scientific principles of solar energy absorption, storage, and use. They must analyze, evaluate, and create their prototype with this knowledge, adapting their knowledge to solve the problem. So, before he decides what technology to use, the teacher hones in on the goal of the lesson. The goal requires students to apply their deep knowledge in a new situation. Therefore, it falls into the adaptation quadrant, just where the teacher wants it. Only when the goal of the lesson has been identified does the teacher consider what technology to use. He determines that students might need to use a computer for the sign, which they'll have to program. They might also use measuring and calculating tools, computer simulated graphics, or other real-life engineering technologies. By considering the rigor relevance framework when you decide on learning tasks and activities, you can be sure to use technologies that promote the most meaningful learning.